Hi, Kurt Rollo, Associated Press. Can you talk a little bit about, um, is this a, a, gonna be a game of attrition? Do you try to wear Notre Dame down? What's, what's the plan uh, that would help you guys be successful? Kurt wants the game plan. <laughs> We're definitely at Notre Dame, aren't we? <laughs> Did you ask Neil for the game plan? No, uh, uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> we, we try to wear everybody down, um, no matter what. We, that is our style of play, 94 feet. Um, like I said yesterday, it seemed like Marquette was, you know, in charge of the pace, but really they weren't because that's not how they play. And so what we try to do is make teams play, um, diff make teams adjust to how we play, which is up and down, fast, and, you know, really make you have to work for every single bucket that you get. And I think naturally it wears teams down. And we've played some really elite level three-point shooting teams. And as you can see last night, they just didn't have the legs when they really needed it. Uh, and that is because of the work we put in the first 30 minutes of the game. Tyler Horka, Blue and Gold Illustrated. Y'all obviously beat a number one seed last year. Mm -hmm. This is a number two. S same kind of deal, though, playing on their home floor. How much does that experience help you guys? And uh, just looking at Notre Dame, does it feel like they're one of those top-level teams and, and it would mean a lot to beat them? Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> first of all, anytime you get to win another game, it's a big deal. I think the committee has done a great job with getting the best teams in the field. Um, and so the fact that we're one of the 32 remaining, it means something. Uh, as far as the experience, hopefully it does work out for us. But as you can see, we rely on a bunch of different players throughout the course of the game. I don't think our depth is talked about a lot because maybe they don't show up, all their numbers don't show up in the box score. But any time that you can have people play minutes and it not hurt you, it, that is depth. Um, I don't care if the score is the same when they got in to when they left. The fact that they weren't in the negative is, is, is key. Notre Dame uh, is, is a very good team. I think the Southeastern Conference has prepared us for that. Uh, just playing high level teams with big time players. You know, you talk about star-studded freshmen. Last year we had Flage, and then this year it's Michaela Williams and Malaysia Fulwali. So we have a good bit of star power in, in, our, in our conference. So I don't know that our team will be emotional any way, good or bad. We just want to win. And when you talk about the star-studded freshmen, mm -hmm. You're alluding to Hannah Hidalgo, yeah. I'm assuming. Um, but how good is she, and, and what kind of threat does she pose to y'all? Well, I guess we're going to find out tomorrow. Because <laughs> sometimes TV lies to you. So I'm excited to see her in person. You know, I, didn't, I haven't had a chance to watch her in person, obviously, because we're not in the same conference. And a lot of times they play when we play. So this is the most film I've really been able to watch on her, just because we really had no reason uh, to do so before. But I do know that she's a dog, and she's uh, deserving of everything that she's gotten, and I don't think they would be where they, were, where they are without her. Hi, Coach. Uh, Anthony Anderson, South Bend Tribune. Uh, first off, uh, in general, and I know it varies from venue to venue, but how, how big would you say the home court advantage is for NCAA tournament teams? And then secondly, were you surprised or disappointed at all? You're probably too busy working, but to, to what extent it cleared out to, for the second game yesterday? Oh, yeah. Look, I, it could be one person in the – it could be nobody. I don't care. When the ball tips up, it's about my team versus the other team. And so, um, obviously, there are such things as home court advantage, but, again – when you look at our record, we were 12 and four, so we didn't win all our games at home. You know, we, we have played some big time teams on the road, and we've played in front of big time crowds. You know, at our home, we played LSU, was, we had 9,000 people, we go on the road, South Carolina sold out with 18,000 people. You know, so uh, we've played 
big crowds throughout our whole conference play and have had to win meaningful games on the road. You know, when we beat Alabama, that was a big win. Uh, you know, uh, Vanderbilt on the road. And then we've played neutral sites, and then obviously we've played in the um, in uh, Palo Alto last year. So as far as we're concerned, we, you know, we have the philosophy, we, we're all we got, we're all we need. And uh, we just kind of hone our own energy no matter what. And I kind of took that from South Carolina, like, that's something that they say, and they got 18,000 fans, and they're still like, we all we got, we all we need, <laughs> you know? And I thought that that was powerful, like, because at the end of the day, it really matters who you're in the in the foxhole with every day. And so we, we don't, I don't, I'd be surprised if we were to get rattled. I'm more concerned about home court advantage when it comes to officiating, if I'm being completely transparent, uh, just because, you know, some sometimes officials are human, and some of these crowds are brutal. <laughs> so sometimes I'm like, did you make that call for the fans, or did you, you know what I mean? Like they just caught up, they get emotional. Uh, but I have trust that we're gonna have the best fish officials in the country tomorrow, and I le I'm leaning on that. And so that shouldn't even be a factor. I just expect it to be a great game. Coach uh, David Eckert, Clarion Ledger. Um, what, what's your process been like preparing on a short turnaround? What, what were the last 12 hours like, and what are, what's the rest of today going to be like for your, your staff and, yep. and your team? Well, this is definitely more refreshing than in the SEC tournament or when we were in the Bahamas because you have no time. You know, you play, and then you – rest and you play the next day and when we were in the Bahamas and we won the tournament we didn't even walk through anything and that's why our, that's why we're built for the tournament because our system is our system we don't have to change it we make a few tweaks and that's about it um, so we honestly feel like this is a gift <laughs> because we get a day where we can watch film and truly prepare uh, for for a great staff and, and a great team in Notre Dame. Uh, last night, I think we were up coaches until about midnight, and then, you know, we watched film this morning at 11 for about an hour, and now we're here. So um, as far as we're concerned, we treat it like almost like a conference prep, you know, even though we get two days. Uh, this is more than enough time for us to prepare. Eric Hansen with Inside ND Sports. I got a couple for you. The first one is you talked about watching film. When you watch film, what do you see in Maddie Westfeld, who's not your typical mm. four, and and the challenges of defending her? Yeah, man, she she is is a special player. You know, to me, she's a secret sauce. She she does a lot of different things that we like. You said we hadn't seen a four player have to do. She's can be a matchup problem, so we have to think about how they're going to try to use her for their advantage. Because I think it's all about advantage basketball, at least it is for us. Uh, but great coaches, and I think Niel is one, is they're going to look for advantages. And I think, you know, it's no secret. People see us switch ball screens. And so how are they going to try to take advantage of that? And what are we going to do to counter what they try to do as far as taking an advantage of that. Last night, Marquette did the same thing, um, and they got us a, a couple times, but but then we were we made some adjustments and we were successful too. Um, listen, I know they got what six seven players, but they just won a, ch a, a conference championship, you know, and I got twelve and we didn't, so we're not gonna make this narrative as they're the underdogs. They're the two seed. We're the seventh seed. So as far as we're concerned, they have the pressure. We don't. And the other thing I wanted to get your thoughts on is it's been a season where it feels like, and, and there's numbers to back this up, women's basketball profile has taken a huge leap. Yeah. Why do you think this is the time that that's happening, and what do you think is driving it? Well, I think uh, definitely social media. Is, has, has been great. I thought, I feel like the media has done 
a great job in and in accepting the fact that women's basketball has star power. NIL is big too. And so all of these companies that are utilizing these student athletes for their name, image, and likeness has truly upped the brand. And I'm talking about, you know, back in the day, when you think about star power, you know, I was a part of the original Big East. I was at Pitt when we were all in there. Notre Dame, St. John's, West Virginia. Remember that? Like, I know you look young, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, back then it was, it was Skyler and then it was like UConn. Those were the stars. And then and everybody else. But now in every region you have a star. You know, east, west, north, south, midwest. Uh, you have stars. And that's what makes it cool. And they're not afraid to not promote themselves and their brand. And, and, and that's women. You know, look, I've been married 16 years. We're a little smarter than men, right? <laughs> so we know how to utilize our brand. And, and they've just done a great job of it. And uh, people have caught on. And, and, and there are a lot of girl dads out there. So now it's not, it doesn't, it isn't embarrassing anymore. You know, women's basketball is here. And I, and I expect just an upward trajectory as we continue to grow our game. Yeah. Well, our philosophy is dictate and disrupt, but even even more in depth, let's take away the let's go a little deeper in the layers. It's us against the ball. And so when we play, when we defend, it's not whomever we decide to guard Hidalgo. It's not that person against Hannah. It's us against Hannah. And so that's our philosophy. And so when we put a lot of stops together, no one takes the credit because someone took away the vision for the pass so they couldn't make a perfect pass. Someone got their hand on the line. Someone shrunk the floor, and that is our system. So we don't ever look at a matchup like, oh, it's going to be, I don't know, like Hannah versus you know Kennedy Todd Williams. No, it's Hannah versus Team 49 in our defense. And that's what's worked for us. Karis Chandler for Rebel Walk. Coach Joe, there's been a lot of talk on X, formerly Twitter. Karis! The support of your husband and daughters. What does their support mean to you? Oh, man. I, I, don't, I couldn't be who I am without my husband. Like, he is the biggest critic, cheerleader, coach in the house. Make no mistake. And during the conference play, my dad and mom, they come and they stay with us. And my dad's 78, and he's a Hall of Fame coach and whatnot. And <laughs> when I walk into the house, they're in another room breaking down the next opponent. <laughs> and now they got my mom doing it. <laughs> and so my mom's like, oh, I'm watching film. So, like, everyone... This is a basketball family, and, and I think we broke through to our six-year-old yesterday because we were leaving the hotel room, and Yuri says, Mommy, I said, Yuri, where's your tablet? She goes, I'm not taking my tablet. I'm going to watch the game. And I gave her a high five, and she had so much pride. And then when I saw the picture, I didn't even recognize her. I just saw Kelly. And then, of course, the Internet does what it does, and then they show Yuri, and she's like, pissed off at the call. And it was like high level. Like that is perfect, you know? So consider us a basketball slash soccer slash gymnastics family. <laughs> we'll probably have just time for one more question here. So did Kelly go to the Trojo School of Work and Rest or is that his natural? Yeah. No, he, he, let me tell you something. You know how I say my tweets are my own? Whatever he does is his. There's no influence by me. Uh, I told you, he's the coach in the house. Like, he tells me. Sometimes I have to say, Kelly, 
you're not at practice every day. Like, I'm at practice. And, and all of the SEC officials know him. <laughs> and he knows them by first name. And, and uh, I didn't know this, but some of our fans said that, you know, I don't sit during the game. And so they said, do you know that your husband doesn't sit during the game? And so if I pace, he paces. If, if I stand, he stands. And so he is fully committed, and, and I love that. All right. Thank you very much, thank Coach. Thank you all.